I had the call with Christine and the Super Sapiens lady. I had sent her all these graphs. I'm going to upload some. You're going to see them. And then I sent her an email three days later to say, for the first time almost ever, I felt good on an evening run. It felt like if I wanted to, I could do one hour, an hour and a half. It wouldn't matter. Previously on evening runs, I would get to 15, 20 minutes and honestly want to walk home from the park because I would check Super Sapiens and my glucose would be like 55. And you want it to be like 90 to 100 at least. 55 and you're, you're over sweating, you're dizzy, you feel fatigued, you feel heavy. It's really, really important you get on top of this stuff. Okay, so today we're going to talk about blood glucose and its effect on training. I've been working with Super Sapiens for long enough now that I started to get a more experienced um, view on how blood glucose affects training. Okay, so probably about 12 months ago, I wouldn't have even known what blood glucose is really. I'd have thought of it purely from a, maybe a person with diabetes and, and if anybody's listening and they're diabetic, well then they're going to know exactly the role of blood glucose on how you feel, on your mood, on energy levels, etc. If not, then you're probably going to look at this and be like, you know, I'm so confused. Blood glucose in short is when you eat something your the um, energy and glucose in your blood, the levels change. If blood glucose goes too high, the body releases insulin, which helps bring it back down. And it hopefully what you want is for it to bring it back down to a you know a, a good level where you feel good and, and you feel um, like you have energy, etc. etc. When you take on maybe carbohydrates just by themselves, there's this big increase in blood glucose. Body releases insulin here, so the blood glucose levels start to go down. The problem is not, the body isn't always brilliant at releasing a, the exact amount of insulin to bring it back to baseline. And so sometimes you're gonna find insulin released here and instead of your blood glucose levels coming back to say optimum, they go down and then they'll come back up. And this bit here, hopefully you can see that when they come down too far is when you can feel rubbish, right? So let's pretend um, this is feeling good and this is like a performance zone all these bits you're looking to avoid. <clears throat> Things like stress, um, quick release energy, you know, carbs, is gonna cause the bumps, right? So what I've learned about from Super Sapiens and what I've learned about glucose is that first and foremost, if you eat within two hours of exercise, it's likely that it takes longer than two hours for your glucose levels to stabilize before you start training. And if they haven't stabilized before training, well then this happens. This, this is a big, another big dump of insulin and your, your optimum was probably up here and your glucose levels are down here. When that happens, that's when you feel dizzy, your legs don't feel good, you feel heavy. And, and I'm sure we've all experienced that, but this was happening to me every single evening run because I couldn't figure out why no matter what I ate, porridge with banana, porridge, peanut butter, banana, toast, peanut butter, banana, just a banana, it didn't matter. My, my levels weren't, 
there wasn't enough time for my levels to stabilize before I would go run for me to feel good. Then I started, I, I had the call with Super Sapiens, their physiologist, Christina, and I started doing three hours before. If you eat three hours before, and I have what, what is like little oat balls that I make, so it's oats, peanut butter, honey, and little chocolate chips, my body responds well to having quite a lot of fat with the carbohydrates. It's kind of like dressing the carbohydrates with fat and that slows down the, the rate that they digest, but it also slows down all the bumps and the, the glucose spikes and drops. And so if I have those three hours before, by the time I get to training, and as you can see, the levels have stabilized, this is probably around eight, and there's still bumpiness. But by nine, three hours later, because it's stabilized, as I start training, the glucose levels naturally go up. Because your, your body will do it itself also. The body does respond to what it needs. And so if it sees that the muscles are under pressure, the body will respond. Now, what you can do is 10 minutes before, if you've had three hours before, 10 minutes before here, you can take on little amounts of carbohydrates. So what most people do is they get to 10 minutes before perhaps their warm up and they get either a sugary drink like Lucozade or Science and Sport or Morten and they, they guzzle it. If you give your body, if at 8.50, 10 minutes before your warm up, you take on a 25 gram gel, all 25 grams of it, because at that moment your body didn't need 25 grams of carbs, <laughs> you ingest it here, your glucose will go up too much because you didn't need 25 grams. What will the body do? Release insulin, another dump. If you're enjoying today's video, you can jump over to joggingroom.com. This is one lecture in the nutrition section there's 15 other lectures. There's also 10 to 15 lectures on strength and conditioning, psychology, and all things linked to running. Strength conditioning, recovery, nutrition, psychology, and then running specific. But let's go back to today's YouTube. So what you want to do with 10 minutes to go is start to think 60 to 80 grams per hour, break it down into minutes, and every six or seven minutes, so at 8.50, 8.57, take on that little amount. It might only be eight grams, and then seven or eight minutes later, another eight grams, and you can continue to do that until you start the session and during the session. So you should be fueling during the warm up, and then you can fuel during the session. But remember that it's almost like microdosing carbs little and often, little and often. Don't take in big chunks. You know, you have to plan, you have to be prepared. I would, I got a bottle of water, 500 milliliter bottle of water, and I drew with a permanent marker around it, so in quarters, and I knew that each quarter was 10 grams of carbs. So I knew, you know, in the next eight minutes, you need to have, you know, drunk all of this. In the next eight minutes, you need to have drunk all of the next line etc etc super super helpful you know really really helps you can get the super sapiens and um, I'm, I'm hoping there's going to be discount i hope i've got that sorted if not keep an eye for it it will come i'm working with super sapiens to try to get you guys some discount and um, but hopefully that comes through if you're not planning to get super sapiens you can use this and this will still be really helpful three hours before 10 minutes before. In those from six o'clock until 8.50, be very careful. Careful with stress, um, careful with, make sure that your hydration drinks don't have loads of sugar. Make sure if you're chewing chewing gum, it doesn't have loads of sugar. I really started to learn that almost every product has sugar. So I now have breakfast at six if I have a hard session day. And these next two hours, 50 minutes, I'm just having water with a pinch of salt, nothing else. 
Oh, disclaimer, around two hours to go, 7 a.m., and or maybe like 7.30, an hour and a half to go, I'll have a black coffee with a little bit of milk. And that doesn't cause too much ruckus that, you know, it's, it's not a problem. Tiny little bit of milk and a black coffee. If you had a latte, for example, well then yes, that might cause a bit more of a uh, ruckus in your your peaks and valleys of, of your glucose roller coaster, we could call it. But that's about all in terms of pre-training. And I hope you find that helpful. And I hope you've seen some, um, yeah, just new tips that's gonna help you prepare better, not just for your morning training, but also for your afternoon training. And always make sure with that three R's, I had the call with Christine and the Super Sapiens lady. I had sent her all these graphs. I'm gonna upload some, you're gonna see them. And then I sent her an email three days later to say, for the first time almost ever, I felt good on an evening run. It felt like if I wanted to, I could do one hour, an hour and a half, it wouldn't matter. Previously on evening runs, I would get to 15, 20 minutes and honestly want to walk home from the park because I would check Super Sapiens and my glucose would be like 55. And you want it to be like 90 to 100 at least. 55 and you're, you're over sweating, you're dizzy, you feel fatigued, you feel heavy. It's really, really important you get on top of this stuff. Thanks so much for watching today's YouTube. If you enjoyed this style of learning and getting these tips, check out joggingroom.com. Much more free tutorials. There's a run and master class on there. There's a marathon plan on there. But on this site, you get to learn much more in depth about what it takes to be a great runner. From myself, Olympic marathon runner and 209 personal best. Check out joggingroom.com and thanks for watching today's YouTube.